September 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 24 and 26 from the Old Testament. Look, the Lord is ready to devastate the earth and leave it in ruins. He will mar its surface and scatter its inhabitants. Everyone will suffer, the priest as well as the people, the master as well as the servant, the elegant lady as well as the female attendant, the seller as well as the buyer, the borrower as well as the lender, the creditor as well as the debtor. The earth will be completely devastated and thoroughly ransacked, for the Lord has decreed this judgment. The earth dries up and withers. The world shrivels up and withers. The prominent people of the earth fade away. The earth is defiled by its inhabitants, for they have violated laws, disregarded the regulation, and broken the permanent treaty. So a treaty curse devours the earth. Its inhabitants pay for their guilt. This is why the inhabitants of the earth disappear and are reduced to just a handful of people. The new wine dries up, the vines shrivel up. All those who like to celebrate groan. The happy sound of the tambourine stops. The revelry of those who celebrate come to a halt. The happy sound of the harp ceases. They no longer sing and drink wine. The beer tastes bitter to those who drink it. The ruined town is shattered. All of the houses are shut up tight. They howl in the streets because of what happened to the wine. All joy turns to sorrow. Celebrations disappear from the earth. The city is left in ruins. The gate is reduced to rubble. This is what will happen throughout the earth, among the nations. It will be like when they beat an olive tree, and just a few olives are left at the end of the harvest. They lift their voices and shout joyfully. They praise the majesty of the Lord in the west. So in the east extol the Lord, along the sea coast extol the fame of the Lord God of Israel. From the ends of the earth we hear songs, the just one is majestic. But I say I'm wasting away. I'm wasting away, I'm doomed. Deceivers deceive, deceivers thoroughly deceive. Terror, pit, and snare are ready to overtake you, inhabitants of the earth. The one who runs away from the sound of the terror will fall into the pit. The one who climbs out of the pit will be trapped by the snare. For the floodgates of the heavens are opened up and the foundations of the earth shake. The earth is broken into pieces. The earth is ripped to shreds. The earth shakes violently. The earth will stagger around like a drunk. It will sway back and forth like a hut in a windstorm. Its sin will weigh it down, and it will fall and never get up again. At that time, the Lord will punish the heavenly forces in the heavens and the earthly kings on the earth. They will be imprisoned in a pit, locked up in a prison, and after staying there for a long time, they will be punished. The full moon will be covered up. The bright sun will be darkened. For the Lord, who commands armies, will rule on Mount Zion in Jerusalem in the presence of his assembly in majestic splendor. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you in praise. I will extol your fame. For you have done extraordinary things and executed plans made long ago exactly as you decreed. Indeed, you have made the city into a heap of rubble, the fortified town into a heap of ruins, The fortress of foreigners is no longer a city. It will never be rebuilt. So a strong nation will extol you. The towns of powerful nations will fear you. For you are a protector for the poor, a protector for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, a shade from the heat. Though the breath of tyrants is like a winter rainstorm, like a heat in a dry land, You humble the boasting foreigners, just as the shadow of a cloud causes the heat to subside, so he causes the song of tyrants to cease. The Lord who commands armies will hold a banquet for all the nations on this mountain. At this banquet there will be plenty of meat and aged wine, tender meat and choicest wine. On this mountain he will swallow up the shroud that is over all the peoples, the woven covering that is over all the nations. He will swallow up death permanently. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from every face and remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. Indeed, the Lord has announced it. At that time they will say, Look, here is our God. We waited for him, and he delivered us. Here is the Lord. We waited for him. Let's rejoice and celebrate his deliverance. For the Lord's power will make this mountain secure. 
Moab will be trampled down where it stands, as a heap of straw is trampled down in a manure pile. Moab will spread out its hands in the middle of it, just as a swimmer spreads his hands to swim. The Lord will bring down Moab's pride as it spreads its hands. The fortified city along with the very top of your walls, he will knock down. He will bring it down. He will throw it down to the dusty ground. At that time, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. The Lord's deliverance like walls and a rampart makes it secure. Open the gates so a righteous nation can enter, one that remains trustworthy. You keep completely safe the people who maintain their faith, for they trust in you. Trust in the Lord from this time forward, even in Yah, the Lord, an enduring protector. Indeed, the Lord knocks down those who live in a high place. He brings down an elevated town. He brings it down to the ground. He throws it down to the dust. It is trampled underfoot by the feet of the oppressed by the souls of the poor. The way of the righteous is level. The path of the righteous that you make is straight. Yes, as your judgments unfold, O Lord, we wait for you. We desire your fame and reputation to grow. I look for you during the night. My spirit within me seeks you at dawn. For when your judgments come upon the earth, those who live in the world learn about justice. If the wicked are shown mercy, they do not learn about justice. Even in a land where right is rewarded, they act unjustly. They do not see the Lord's majesty revealed. O Lord, you are ready to act, but they don't even notice. They will see and be put to shame by your angry judgment against humankind. Yes, fire will consume your enemies. O Lord, you make us secure, for even all we have accomplished you have done for us. O Lord, our God, masters other than you have ruled us, but we praise your name alone. The dead do not come back to life. The spirits of the dead do not rise. That is because you came in judgment and destroyed them. You wiped out all memory of them. You have made the nation larger, O Lord. You have made the nation larger and revealed your splendor. You have extended all the borders of the land. O Lord, in distress they looked for you. They uttered incantations because of your discipline. And when a pregnant woman gets ready to deliver and strains and cries out because of her labor pains, so were we because of you, O Lord. We were pregnant, we strained, we gave birth, as it were, to wind. We cannot produce deliverance on the earth. People to populate the world are not born. Your dead will come back to life. Your corpses will rise up. Wake up and shout joyfully, you who live in the ground, for you will grow like plants drenched with the morning dew, and the earth will bring forth its dead spirits. Go, my people, enter your inner rooms. Close your doors behind you. Hide for a little while until his angry judgment is over. For look, the Lord is coming out of the place where he lives to punish the sin of those who live on the earth. The earth will display the bloodshed on it. It will no longer cover up its slain. God, I sometimes think the whole Bible can just be wrapped up in in one Bible verse. Uh, John 3.30, you must become greater, I must become less. Because once we get that, everything else seems to fall into place. Once you become greater, um, your name is greater, your word is greater, and we're obedient to that, and we become less, we become humble in that. Um, we respond to your will. Uh, we act accordingly to your will. We glorify you. Uh, so, so much of the rest of the Bible talks about how we should behave. And it's just those short little words <laughs> that if we could just get those right. Uh, and even here, Isaiah talks about it, uh, where he says in chapter 26, uh, verse 8. Yes, as your judgments unfold, O Lord, we wait for you. We desire your fame and reputation to grow. So same thing, if God, if you were bigger than everything in this world, if your fame was bigger than those in Hollywood, if your reputation was, was bigger than uh, the lure of the uh, material things of this world, if all of those things were bigger in our hearts and our minds and in our lives, then we would have our priorities straight and we would be obedient to you. But that, that lure of the sparkly things, of the material things, of it being all about us, our own egos, our own kingdoms, uh, gods within this world, uh, are so incredibly attractive to us while we're here on this earth. 
I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, I get the whole selfish part because I have that in me, um, like most people do. I, I completely understand where those come from. I just don't know why we keep choosing those things even after we know who you are. We know your power, we know your sovereignty, we know your love, we know your grace, we know your forgiveness, we know all of these big, uh, huge facets of who you consistently are, and yet we still choose these empty, horrid things of this earth, these things that can give us nothing but emptiness, uh, dead ends. Uh, some of them can produce death here on earth. And sometimes I come back to Something I, I talk to my youth girls a lot about. Um, girls in general have a harder time with confidence of believing that they deserve what they deserve. Um, they tend to believe a lot of times because society has told them that they, they don't deserve very much unless they look this way or they think this way or they smell this way or they have these certain things. I know that they go after boys too, but girls just seem to have a harder time with understanding what they deserve. Uh, they're also the ones more predominantly put on display here in this world as sex objects, uh, that they have to look a certain way in order to receive attention from men, in order to re in order to get a husband, in order to be happy, they have to look a certain way. And so I, part of why I think we choose those things is it's much easier to settle. It's much easier to go down <laughs> beneath us what we deserve than it is to live up to, gosh, some of the wording that Isaiah uses, uh, especially in these couple chapters. It's really hard to live up to the righteousness that you expect out of us. It's hard to live that kind of life. And I know the only way that I get it right sometimes is with you, with your strength, with your determination, with your will unfolding in my life. But it's sometimes, honestly, easier to choose the worldly things that are temporary because it's what we believe we deserve. These temporary things that can't give us anything. I am still baffled that you think I deserve you, God that I deserve forgiveness, that I deserve to be free and have eternal life. I'm sorry, have you met me? <laughs> I mess up all the time. I do unrighteous things all the time. I choose sin over you all the time, God. I have a new heart and I still get it wrong. And yet you in your infinite wisdom still choose me. And so there comes my arrogance again. My arrogance is showing in my statement of, I don't deserve to have those things. And you clearly say, I'm sorry, did you miss who I am? I am the God who created you, Janelle. I am the one who loves you more than anybody else. And if I tell you, you deserve these things, it is because I created you to deserve these things. And don't be so selfish, Janelle, and so self-righteous that you tell me you don't. Because that really represents how you feel about our relationship, you know. It's not like you're trying to be humble. It's not like you're trying to diminish yourself. You're actually being quite arrogant. Yeah, I know you and I have had this conversation a lot, God. <laughs> but sometimes it's really hard to make that connection that we somehow deserve all of these incredible blessings that you give us. All of this mercy, all of this justice you show us, all of this love that you show us. We are overwhelmed with how much you care for us. So God, can you help us today to fill in that gap between our selfishness of, oh, we don't deserve this, so we're going to choose the worldly things. And that gap between that and how much you love us. That you made us to be righteous. You made us to be holy. You made us to deserve your love and forgiveness. You made us those things. And you want us to understand that we deserve to have freedom, to have eternal life, to have forgiveness, to have a relationship with you. And we, you also want us to understand that we deserve those things much better than the emptiness of the worldly things that we choose. So my prayer today, God, is that I will wait for you. I do desire for your fame and reputation to grow and be bigger and bigger. 
I do want you to become more. I want me to become less. I do want to understand that I rightfully am an heir to that relationship with you. And that you will always be able to give me things that the world can't. God, allow me to choose my inheritance over the emptiness of the offerings here on earth. In your son's name I pray. Amen.